let us remember we are in the holy presence of God and let us adore him. So happiness and holiness are something really integral to the image of God and therefore his likeness. There are goals um, to be happy, to be holy, and it's quite natural to hear people looking for happiness. But what about holiness? Is this something we see as achievable or is it something really far beyond our reach? And why would we even want to be called holy in the first place? So JC Rao once noted that God has linked happiness and holiness. And what God links, we shouldn't even think about separating. So really our search for happiness, it's in fact holiness. And Pope Francis even said that we shouldn't be afraid to strive for holiness, but turn ourselves over to the love of God. And so it's not about doing extraordinary things. It's about doing ordinary things in love, hope, joy and faith. It's as simple as that. Living every day in love, hope, joy and faith. What's more, Frederick William Faber once said that happiness is a great power of holiness. Thus kind words by their power of producing happiness also produce holiness. This is incredible because it means that our everyday actions, bringing someone a cup of tea, sharing a smile, giving someone a hug, opening the door, all of those usual things, being in service to one another, is in fact striving for holiness. So in St Paul's letter to the Hebrews, he writes, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And so as Christians, the example we need to set is that through love, compassion and joy, people will see God. And through us, this is the greatest likeness of God that we can be. Ali Worthington declares that God is the one who gave us the deepest desire for happiness. He delights in our delight. So being happy, sharing happiness, is in fact the likeness of God. And so when we're happy, we can't forget to thank God. We've got to be able to rejoice in our joy and so that God rejoices as well. We need to include him in our prayers of gratitude and thankfulness. So in Leviticus, God tells us that we are holy because God is holy. He has set us apart from other nations so we can be our own. And this is then later repeated by Peter in the gospel. So Peter writes, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's precious possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light so when we're happy we're holy and when we're happy and holy god is both happy and holy and we are both of these things and so much more because we have a god who is compassionate who is love who is happiness and who is holy. Let us pray. Loving Father, let us recognise the possibility of holiness is within our reach. When we share love, joy and faith, may you multiply our happiness and the graces you bestow upon us. Let us always strive to be ourselves and to help others do the same. May we never cease to thank you for the blessings you bestow upon us and that our actions may always be in your likeness. Amen. Live Jesus in our hearts forever.